Jupiter at night, well, it's on the internet. Jupiter at night, Jupiter at night is presented live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Now, tonight's episode, we're going to cover the science of the search for alien life in our own backyard, our and solar system. There's a reason we're wearing headphones, because we actually have somebody joining us from yeah. elsewhere on the internet. You may know her. You better know her if you've been watching our show. Uh, she goes by the IRC chat name of Mars Base, yeah. also known as Heather. She has a bachelor's in physics. She's a total space geek. She's going to school us on all of this stuff. Uh, in fact, most of the content of tonight's show is courtesy of her. Yeah, so. all, or, or all of it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But we thought, but we're going to claim some of it. We thought if there was ever uh, extraterrestrial life discovered in our solar system, in a moon somewhere, something like that, one of the first places you'd hear about it is on our show because we're live every single night, well, at least Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So before that amazing discovery ever happens, the first thing we've got to do is learn the science behind it. Sure. So uh, Mars and where Base. it would be most likely to pop up. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, Not a problem. let's start taking a look guys? at this. Yeah, you bet. Where now, one of the first it? things that I think we're going to start with is, can you give us kind of a high level? Uh, some of you might have heard about the something called the Drake Equation. Oh, boy. This is like, this is math. Yeah. And this is something that tells us how likely it is for life to exist in just our galaxy, or is it the universe in general? Uh, uh, just the universe in general, but we're looking at the galaxy because what we can do is say, um, you know, we can look at how many stars we have in our galaxy. So it's the kind of equation that says, um, what's the average rate of star formation? How many of, what percentage of those have planets? What percentage of those could actually develop life? What percentage uh -huh. of those could develop intelligent life? Uh, what of those could actually produce civilizations that could actually produce detectable signals that we, you know, for any length of time? A reasonable length of time that we could actually pick up. That's so it's incredible. all about percentages and calculations and figuring out, um, you know, all the various numbers for these to kind of give us a, a guesstimation for mm -hmm. um, what might be out there. Now, wow. based on the Drake equation, um, is it? Do scientists generally think that it's likely that we'll find life within our own solar system? Um, depends on which uh, field of view you ask. I mean, it's they conti we continue to look because. Um, you know, it's the more we look here on Earth, the more we see all the crazy types of life that are actually here. So we say, well, it can exist in all these different types of environments. Are mm -hmm. any of those similar environments out in our solar system? Well, like, for example, I mean, uh, we covered, you know, that arsenic-based life form claims uh, several months back that mm -hmm. NASA made. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that if, if proven, could open a whole new door to looking for other forms of life elsewhere in the galaxy as well. Yes. Whoa. Now, um... The search for extraterrestrial life within our own solar system is obviously, it's an old subject. Mm. Everybody, yes. since the dawn of time, has been basically asking, are we alone? Right. Now, you got to figure, you know, we've, we've gone to the moon where, you know, we know there's no life there, but there's other areas in our solar system maybe life could be hiding. Mm hmm And I think the most prominent for everybody and for a long time has been Mars. Yeah. From which yeah. you take your namesake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, I love this picture that you sent us. It's, it's one from, uh, let's see if I can get his name right, Giovanni Schiaparelli from yes. 1877. This is incredible. Yep. This is, uh, now, obviously their instruments weren't as sophisticated back then, but can you describe no. kind of what he's trying to get across with this picture? Well, what he was doing is he had a refractor, which means it's using lenses, you know, feet across, you know, down a long tube. And so he looks down that and he looks at um, Mars and, of course, uh, the planets are the things in the sky that act differently from the rest of the stars. So that is some, one of the, the objects that everyone was most in, interested in looking at. So he looked at that, and he saw what he thought were canals or channels. Yeah. Um, now, in Italian, it more meant it could kind of be kind of fuzzy where are they artificial? Uh, you know, are little, is little, are little boards out there hoeing the ground? Um, <laughs> or is it just, you know, random natural channels or gullies? But through that kind of a, a telescope, I mean, a row of uh, craters could look like a straight line. Or, you know, right. you have this great plane. If you're looking at the shadows right. long, yeah. long yeah. Or if you have a plane yeah. and then a whole bunch, uh, and then a area of craters or more rough terrain, the division between those two could look like a straight line. And then you have the polar caps that do actually shrink and grow with the Martian seasons. You have dust storms. So there's all these different things that make it look different. Mm -hmm. And he was prescribing these channels to it which is, you know, where a lot of the, you know, 
there were a lot of people who've heard about the canals and the mm-hmm. you know the mistranslation. Well, Mars, you just touched on something that I'd like to cover a little more. You mentioned that the polar ice caps of, of Mars actually grow and shrink based on their seasons. Yes. That Mars has seasons and weather. Now, yes, the fact does. that their polar caps are growing and shrinking, that implies that there is some form of atmospheric or liquid water on the planet. And just from a layman's point of view, we've been told if water exists, life can exist. Life could be possible, yeah. yeah. So, well, uh, one of the caps is uh, frozen solid carbon dioxide. The other one is a large part water. In fact, the soil itself contains about, around the equatorial zone even, contains about uh, 7 to 12 percent water by weight. So there is a lot of it in the soil. Most of it is frozen because the atmospheric pressure on Mars is so low that it really can't um, be water. You know, if, ah. uh, if so it like does, it changes, you know, it, sort of, it just goes straight from a solid to a gas pretty much? Yeah. Sublimation. Straight from uh, ice to gas. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so there's, no, there's not like there's anything, there's nothing swimming around in that then. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Now, I was not on the surface. <laughs> I'm familiar with when I look at when I when I think of Mars, I think of like these space rocks that we've seen that have have I like we've talked about yep. have had possible traces of life in them before. Yeah, and actually um Mars called into a post show uh, a couple weeks back and we talked a lot about this, but let's go ahead and cover this uh Allen Hills meteorite because yeah. we yep. we talked about this in our post show and this has been proven to have originated on Mars, correct? That is uh, correct. So we can look at uh um, you know, it was misclassified at first, but then we can look at the chemical analysis and the composition and say, yes, it is definitely from Mars. In fact, they've actually been able to use one of the Martian orbiters, analyze the, the ground on Mars, and give it, have a best guess that it where on Mars it originally came from. Oh, wow. A branch of the, uh, the Great no Canyon kidding. system there, Valles Marineris. That's amazing. And is it like ejecta, like a, a comet hit Mars or something? Or like a, a, something hit Mars and it shot us off into space? Uh, yeah, they the think it's probably a combination of a, of a couple of different hits where it got kind of broken off and then it got, um, and then another asteroid came in and in the ejecta from around that, it got sh- flung off, ah, you ah. know, circle the solar system. That but poor rock's when it been around. left Mars, it was about a rough four life? and a half, yeah, it was four, <laughs> about four and a half billion years ago, Mars actually had liquid water on it because its atmosphere used to be a lot thicker. It is thinned off over the millennia. How can they tell that? At that point, it did actually have wa- water on it. Liquid water is it on from the rocks, surface. Is it from rocks like this that they can tell that Mars used to have an atmosphere? Or is it just... Uh, how do they know that? Uh, there's a lot of different analysis that they can do. Um, it doesn't have the, the gravity or the magnetic field to protect it from solar winds. Mm. So every year, the solar winds kind of blow away a little bit more of its atmosphere. And so you can see that over time. Oh. And then working backwards, you can say, well... Going backwards, we can see it. The, the Martian rovers have, have seen mineralogy that proves that um, certain ro- you know, minerals that can only form in the presence of liquid water. So we can kind of see, yes, it was definitely oh. water. We can kind of back calculate about how long ago it took to be you there. Put a, uh, we've, got, we've got a ton of links in our show notes, including this photo here. Is this, uh, is this a team of, of researchers recovering the rocks? Yes, that is. Well, not specifically that specific right. one, but right. that's the kind of environment is. Uh, you know, you can collect asteroids from all over the place. You know, they fall, you know, and they hit people's cars and, you know, you hear the roofs. <laughs> oh, that would suck. But, yeah. I don't <laughs> think my insurance covers that. But the places to find them are deserts and the polar caps because you simply, you know, drive around and it's all one color except for a black rock. <laughs> that's You're interesting. You're like, huh. That now, one of, the, there. one of the reasons that this Allen Hill asteroid has been such kind of a, a, um, a hot top m- meteorite, sorry, um, is because of the evidence of something that they're assuming might be actual evidence of life. Now, yes. as we covered in our post show previously, there's a lot of scientists on each side of the board that discov- that determine no, it's not, or yes, it is. So it yeah. hasn't been, it's, it doesn't have a final confirmation, but... They're like fossilized... Uh, what do they call it? Mic- micro... Nanobacteria. Nan- nanobacteria. Nanobacteria. Fossilized nanobacteria. That they yeah, found. nothing on Earth is that small. But, you know, it was, came from Mars when it had water. There's evidence of what they call polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which well, are one of the mouthful. most widespread organic pollutants. You can find it in oil, in car, in, in coal, in tar deposits. Um, wow. So sort of all of these things put together um, is enough for some of the scientific community Wait, wait, to wait, say, wait, wait. You find those in oil and tar? Does that mean yes. that there used to be a thriving civilization on Mars that used pollutants? Is that what you're getting at here? But they were <laughs> nanobacteria sized? Because well, I think that's what you're saying. Ta- coal and tar really just used to be plants. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
Sorry, Jay. I like my story better. I liked where you were going, too. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, should we... You should like we, the idea of little Borks using them to, uh, so they didn't have to hoe I, manually. I do right, like right. Should we jump on from Mars, or is there anything else we want to cover? Because I feel like we could go deeper into the solar system yet. We could. Um, we could move on. Uh, we've got uh, some more stuff in our show yeah. notes. We, we were going to talk about another asteroid that landed, or meteorite that landed in France. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's you know, people used so. to think that life might exist on Venus as well. Uh, yeah. Even, was it, you and I were talking earlier, Mars, was it Heinlein that you said that? Yes. Thought that uh, there was a, like a thriving forest on Venus. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. it's been around for a long time, but um, Insulatus. Insulatus. A huh? moon of Saturn. Yeah. Yes. Let's talk about this a little bit because now moons, I think, are an untapped resource oh, in sure. this potential. Yeah. You don't hear much about these things. And, but considering the size of Saturn, and, and how later we're going to talk about a moon of Jupiter, uh, it's just, I mean, these moons are practically the size of planets. And there's and a lot of them. There are. I mean, how many moons does Saturn have? How many moons does Jupiter have? Yeah, I know. I don't even know. Dozens. And so, so, yeah. there's, now, so is it believed, Mars, that, there's a, that there is a, a likelihood that there could be maybe, what, ice on these moons or what? What are we looking for? Here? It is, uh, we can, it is definitely ice on the surface. We can, you know, you can use spectrographic analysis to view the, and see how shiny things are. Right. We can look at, you know, what kind of infrared um, light they, they, you know, water absorbs specific wavelengths. Mm -hmm. But Saturn's moon, you know, we had the Cassini spacecraft, you know, the one that landed on the, one of the moons. It had the Cassini Huggins, so it, you know, puffed off and landed on the little um, moon that had the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, we can see that, you know, that it is an ice surface. We can do the calculations to prove that tidal heating uh, the the force that Saturn puts on this tiny little moon is enough to actually heat it up enough so that there could be water in the surface. Now, do, they fact, do you say that because uh, I'm looking at this picture that almost looks like there's eruptions coming off the surface. Like Yes, that is correct. There geysers, are actually, I guess you might call them. Yeah, geysers. Yeah, yeah. there are geysers. And it's, uh, you know, the satellite was looping around and it looked back at the sun and actually see it. And it could actually analyze the geyser and it, they can actually say that that is salt water. Well, because like wow. you mentioned, you mentioned real quickly spectrometry, which is basically when these things get between us and the sun, we can watch how light refracts off the specific yes. chemical That's compounds. How it's absorbed, how it's refract. So they can tell that that stuff's spewing out based on how it, how it reflects back to us has salt in it. That's amazing. That's like we're, we're, that, it's just incredible how much exploring you can do just by looking at at, at something. Right. At Who needs warp light? drive? Right. Yeah. Well, I do. I, I would like some warp drive. <laughs> Please, sir. I'd like some warp drive. <laughs> so that's Insulatus. Now, uh, are they planning, do you know, uh, uh, like, are scientists talking about going to uh, check these moons out in, in greater detail? Do you know of any at all? Uh, uh, Insulatus and... They, <coughs> well, I know that I've heard of uh, some, talking about things about Europa. Um, oh, yeah? You know, the moon of Jupiter. Yeah. Right. Um, but any of this stuff, you know, they talk about, you know, how to get out there, how to make sure that we um, don't contaminate it. You know, how do we get build something on Earth, send it out to space, and then decontaminate it oh. to such a degree that we know it's not going to, you know, Contain any mess with the bio, uh, so stuff, So stuff anything. like, say something was, we got a picture here of Europa, say something here. Europa. Is, Europa, Jeremy. Uh, say Europa. this guy, say you got something going out here, even though it travels through the vacuum of space, and there's like radiation out there and all those kinds of things, we still worry about bacteria surviving that? Yes, it can. Sir, it can. Wow. So you have to, you know, treat it in such a way that you're going to kill off we well, don't want to run that risk. Yeah, that's true, right? Even the risk of it's too... Hmm. Boy. Okay. Now, um, on Europa, uh, now what are we looking at mm -hmm. here? Because it, aren't there... Uh, this is another example of tidal forces, am I right? Of Those are actually craters. So, so we can see where things, you know, just like the moon has craters, this mm -hmm. has craters. And we can look at the type of crater and the one um, on the bottom right. Uh, wow, did you hear that thunder? You can see they, they look I different. Did. It's not quite like hitting dirt. It's more like uh, cracking a, a boiled egg. Right. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Wow. And you can just look and at the cracks then, and know And then what's some going of on. the uh, tiger stripes, as they can call them, or the, you know, where you can see the ice is pulled apart and put together, you know, is on top of the crater. So you can kind of age them in that kind of a way. Interesting. That's fascinating. Like looking actually. at the rings of a tree, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I like that. So Europa also has, uh, is it solid ice then, or are they thinking that that's also water underneath the ice? They're thinking that it has uh, a, an ocean. I mean, uh, again, we can calculate, you know, the tidal forces of Jupiter on this little tiny moon and say it's enough to cause, you know, to heat it up. Now, it's not, you know, it, they're thinking it could probably be about 100 
kilometers, maybe 60 miles. Um, hmm. It's got a That's metallic core. That's not a whole core. lot, but it's, it's any amount of water is potentially enough to support some yeah, well, form I mean, of life. Yeah, well, I mean, even just that is about twice the volume of Earth's oceans. Oh, because it covers the entire moon. Yeah, because right. it covers the entire moon. Right. Well, we can look at it, you know, through infrared and say, you know, the top layer is ice. Um, the magnetic field that we've seen um, shows that it, it has like a shell of conductive material. Like, so it's, you know, like a salty liquid candy shell. <laughs> Nom. <solid> ice shell. <laughs> one, of the, one of my favorite photos that you sent in is like a concept art of a space torpedo. Yeah. Uh, yes. that is, like, is this like a concept of how you could probe into the ocean there? Yeah, this is the kind of thing where they say, uh, go out, have one part of the satellite orbiting the moon, and then you have one land on there, milk through the ice, and have a little submersible go out and swim -like around thing. the ocean to see that's, what's in there. That's awesome. And that's where you get to the point where they're, you know, extremely concerned about contamination. You yeah, don't want right. earth germs right. in the water. You know, yeah, we're if there's although, anything there, on the other hand, you don't you want could, it to have to compete. You could purposefully contaminate it, and then there's colonization, right? <laughs> Very true. Maybe, maybe you uh, send some trout out there, some rainbow trout, yeah. and then, uh, by the time we get there, <laughs> some great fishing. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, nice can, I ask, can I ask you, Mars Base, what your personal best hope is for possible life, if there is any out in the solar system? You think it's Mars? Uh, well, of course. You know, I'm, I'm heavy leaning to Mars. Anything on Mars is probably fossilized or much deeper in the surface. Um, it doesn't have a thick atmosphere. It doesn't have a magnetosphere. So it's not protecting the surface from UV rays. So the top wow. part of it, uh, you know, it'll be irradiated pretty good. So that could be like the mole people. Or living closer underneath. to the poles. Yep. And it's mole people, certainly possible. Definitely. Maybe like some sort of animal life? Or do you think it's... More Bacteria. basic than that. Yeah. Little, tiny, little... We're not talking about borts. That's depressing. We're talking about <laughs> tiny, little organisms. Right. The, you know, if you get into the more complex organisms, multicell, you know, invertebrates, that type of thing, then you're, you're leaning more towards, uh, you know, Europa and Enclades. Okay. Anything else you want to touch on before we wrap up tonight, Mars? Uh, I thought it was interesting that uh, Arthur C. Clarke got it so right that, uh, you know, we didn't even know most of this stuff about Europa, but back in... The 2010, he called out. He said, you can settle any planet you want except Europa. That's ours. In, in 2001? Yep. In 2010, the, the Odyssey. It's the his, his second it's Odyssey. follow-ups to 2001 A Space Which Odyssey. Which I think uh, was, yeah, okay. I think yeah, you meant the year. Written in yeah. 82, though. I thought you meant the year. Okay, no. I got you. He wrote it in 1982. <laughs> I'm with you now. That's great. That's, <laughs> well, he called it, man. He did call it. Sci-fi, they're right. They're right. Well, you know, unless yeah. they're talking about There's Venus. a handful of the sci-fi authors that got a lot of stuff remarkably correct. Well, there you go. Or they at least inspired some stuff, too. I think we've seen some examples yeah. of that. Self-fulfilling right. pussies. Well, thanks, Mars Base, for calling in and setting us straight on the, uh, the science behind searching for life in our own solar system. I think. You know, actually, there will probably be a future episode on uh, long-distance space travel and stuff Ooh. like that. And we'll probably be tapping Mars to uh, make sure we get our you brains her on straight. brain. We'll be tapping her brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her, her vast amount of knowledge. Accessing her knowledge. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there you go. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night, and we'll be right back here tomorrow night. Oh, I was just yeah. about to get going. Oh, did you hear that stuff? Yeah. That was great. You just cracked your back in my face. <clears throat> well, I forgot all the stuff I said about the intro, so let's go. Here we go. It's Jupiter at Night in three numbers. Hello everyone and welcome to G-